Hello there everybody, this is Kim, your favorite travel agent, owner of Dawn and Dust Travel Agency, where we create flexible, affordable vacation planning, as well as teach and advocate for travel literacy and education. And so, on this episode of Travel Tip Tuesday, our topic will be how to use your phone abroad. And I believe that this is a very important topic because a lot of people don't realize that, you know, once you cross the pond or you cross the border, you go to a different place, your phone doesn't always work in the same countries, y'all. Everywhere else doesn't have AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, and Sprint. You know what I'm saying? So this topic is very important because you have to be able to communicate overseas um, while you're away from home, just in case, God forbid, something goes wrong and somebody got to come get you. They need to be in contact with you. And also, slightly more importantly, you definitely want to avoid international roaming fees and charges because they will occur. We're going to talk about that later because I got a story. I got a couple horror stories. This is from the heart, y'all. So, um, yes, using your phone abroad and why it's important. It's going to be five different points we're going to talk about if you're taking notes. So, first and foremost, you want to um, make sure that your phone will work in your destination, meaning that I know a lot of companies, such as mine, like, for example, I have T-Mobile. I'll use that a lot while we're um, in this video. But, you know, they get calls to you know mexico usa and canada that's included or whatever not every phone carrier will do that so the best people to get in contact or the best way to know whether or not your phone will work at a certain destination is to call your um contact support for your phone company because they will be the ones to give you specific information with regards to the regulations for the location where you'll be going and also different countries use different technologies and providers for their cell phone services. So not everywhere, like I said, will have T AT and T where you go over there. You go to Africa, they don't have T Mobile. For example, I had to uh when I went to South Africa, uh and Paris, it was all in one trip. So for both of those trips I had to get a whole bunch of different stuff to in order for my phone to work just because I wasn't prepared. You know, I went over there and my phone didn't work for nothing. You know, but I didn't want to turn it on either because I knew that, okay, if I'm paying this much over here, I know for sure that it's going to cost a grip if I use my phone over here. So the best way to prevent that from happening is to call your contact support team for your phone carrier before you go out of the country because sometimes um, they can tell you whether or not your phone is even compatible to use while it's over there. So um, when I mean compatible... Uh, the world, most of the world um, phones work through a what's called a GSM frequency, like letter G, S, and M. Um, and I know in America, those carriers that carry the GSM frequency are AT&T and T-Mobile, which is what I've always used because they all know I'll be going all over the place. However, there are other phone carriers that don't use that frequency, and the one that they use is called CDMA. Now, that one is less known all throughout of the world. So you may have more of a chance of your phone glitching or not working for phone carriers that use this frequency, such as um, Sprint and Verizon, especially older versions of those phones. So sometimes people just avoid having to deal with that at all and sometimes just get a burner phone or a SIM card or some other option to use. And we'll talk about more of those later. But the difference between GSM and CDMA is very important to know, especially if you want to use your own phone on frequencies in other countries of the world the best way to know whether or not your phone is on one of those frequencies is to either one look in the back of your user manual you know the little booklet that you get with your new phone and nobody reads look in the back and see whether or not your phone is gsm or cdma compatible the second choice will be to always just call customer support don't ever try to go on your own judgment because i don't know nothing about putting together a cell phone and taking it back apart so call customer support and they'll be the ones to help you. And, which leads into my second topic, sometimes when you call the phone carriers, depending on which one you have, they'll be able to offer you roaming packages. So roaming packages are needed because, like I was telling you about those roaming charges, they will accrue. And I don't mean like a little charge, like $25, $50. I had one friend, he came back from, I believe, uh, either Jamaica or Nigeria, and he had a $350 fee added on to his already $200 phone bill. You know, and he didn't even realize it until he got home. So that's how they do. They sneak up on you. 
because whether or not your phone, you actually physically use the phone while you're overseas, because it's turned on, it still receives and sends out frequencies to other cell towers around it, you know, to ping your location and all of that stuff, GPS, satellite, all of that. So frequencies are still going in and out of your phone and you will have charges for that if you're not careful. So check on those roaming packages when you call customer support because sometimes they're really good deals. Now, sometimes you can get them priced, you know, in a monetary value. You can get, you know, like a certain number of calls or a certain number of texts or a certain amount of data, whatever you prefer. Just make sure that your contact support with your phone carrier team this, uh, excuse me, explains everything in detail for you so that you can make a good decision or a good judgment based off the product that you want. Um, and then uh, thirdly, number three, you want to make sure that your phone is unlocked. This is going back to um, point number one about the difference between GSM and CDMA. So if your phone is not unlocked, it will be very, very difficult for you to use it overseas, especially if you want to exchange SIM cards. So story time, when I got to Paris and I realized that, oh my God, my phone does not work for crap. I had to figure out, all right, what are French cell phone companies? I had to find a French cell phone company, go to the store and get a SIM card that worked with um, that country, that country's phone carriers. Now, before I could even do that, now mind you, we were sitting in Charles Gaulle airport for like three hours trying to get this fixed. I didn't even leave the airport. It was a lot. I had to call, um, uh, at the time I had AT&T, I had to call AT&T and tell them that I needed to unlock my phone right there on the spot, tell them I'm in Paris and I'm uh, kind of on the struggle and it was it was a whole ordeal going through the dial up and the robots on the phone and everything. Finally, they got him to unlock my phone and I had to purchase a SIM card from the French phone company. I believe it was called Orange um, and that itself, it wasn't that much, it was about $30, $35. Um, but once I did do that, because, you know, you have to take your phone apart, take the little micro slide out. Unfortunately, one of the consequences of me going through all of that, I lost my SD card in the process. Because, you know, they're attached to each other. Yeah, I did. And that was over 1,500 pictures, y'all. Mm -hmm. I felt that. I, sh I shed a real tear. I really did. Seven years worth of pictures I lost in Paris because we were just there for a layover, you know. And that's the crazy part. I was only in Paris for 23 hours. And had to deal with all of that just because I wasn't prepared for my phone to work. So please, 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 y'all, if y'all do choose the, you know, interchangeable SIM card option, just make sure, you know, you, first of all, don't be like me and look away while she's doctoring on your phone because you'll lose this important, valuable information. And secondly, you know, you just want to make sure you do something that's good enough for you that doesn't take too much effort because that was a lot of work. And if you go the SIM card route, Wherever you go, you have to buy a new SIM card for every single country that you go to, usually. Now, some places are regional, like, you know, in Europe or like in America, like we have here back at home, they're on, you know, country maps. But normally, once you cross a different continent, it's a totally different array of cell phone companies and options. So if you do want a SIM card, just remember, be careful. And if you don't even want to deal with all of that, you can actually do number four, which is just turn the phone off completely. Leave it on airplane mode. That way no signals go in or go out. And we'll talk about airplane mode in another episode because people don't understand the importance of that and how y'all trying to put my life at risk on the plane. But again, if you don't want to incur those fees or even worry about any signals going into your phone, just turn the phone off. Um, and instead, you can use Wi-Fi um, wherever you go. Now, the only problem about that is having to use Wi-Fi and finding it wherever you go. Because again, I was on the struggle. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't use my phone. I had to pray for the Wi-Fi in the airport. I had to pray for the Wi-Fi in the restaurants. I had to hope that Wi-Fi was free when I got to the hotel, which it wasn't. You know, so that's a whole nother ordeal. You'd be surprised how many extra fees you incurred, like I did, because I wasn't prepared to use my phone in the right way. And I, I wasn't ready to, you know, expect what the world wanted me to expect so to speak so if you want just turn the phone off completely or what i'm going to do moving forward is to have a portable wi-fi or hotspot device so i know a lot of different carriers offer this you know a little portable mobile hotspot or whatever some people have it on their phone it's not the same thing 
You don't want to use, don't use a mobile hotspot on your phone versus a tangible holdable Wi-Fi hotspot. That's a totally different thing because you will accrue those charges on your phone if you use your phone hotspot versus having a pocket Wi-Fi that has nothing to do with your phone. My brand that I'm going to start going with is called Travel Wi-Fi. It's in like one word together. It's this little um, blue rectangle. You can keep it in your pocket, keep it in a fanny pack keep it in a book bag and it's basically your little portable Wi-Fi router you can take it wherever you go and it'll give you the internet connection that you need like even in remote places and I know that it's really 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 cheap to use so it's not super free if you want to make real phone calls or make real texts from your regular phone I think it last time I checked it cost about a penny a minute for phone calls or like half a penny for text messages something really really cheap and reasonable and but that's also a really really good option because you can keep track of it and keep it with you wherever you go um and leading into tip number five along with their wi-fi you know I, because i already encourage you not to use your phone broadband at all the best way to do that especially if you have your little wi-fi companion will be to download some free calling apps from your play store or from iTunes or from whatever um, iOS that you use. My favorite is WhatsApp because WhatsApp is global. You know, you can take, you can do text messages, video calls, and phone calls. You just don't have voicemail. I even taught my parents how to use WhatsApp. They were like, what is this? I don't know what to do with none of this. But once they saw the value of the app, they made sure that they always used it, especially while I was overseas because it's live, it's just like this. You can FaceTime people, you can send them instant messages and things like that, and all of those are for free. So WhatsApp, Google Voice, Skype, Text Plus, any of those free apps, I always encourage people to use along with your little Wi-Fi buddy if you decide to use it or whatever Wi-Fi choice that you use. That way, everything is absolutely free for the most part, you know, depending on your little Wi-Fi buddy, of course. But that way, you don't even have to worry about any of that while you're overseas because you're not using the broadband that the phone companies use through the cell towers you're using your wi-fi the whole time you're there you can still use wi-fi while airplane mode is on y'all that's how it works why do you think you get to use wi-fi on the plane mm -hmm. so that little portable wi-fi buddy will come in handy very very handy dandy as well as those calling apps because they're free um let me see do, do, do. nope all right so that's everything for today we're gonna go back over the points just in case for anyone taking notes so number one make sure your phone will work in your destination call customer support to see what kind of regulations or rules may occur in the country of your destination or the country or the place where you want to go check what kind of broadband your phone uses gsm or cdma and plan accordingly for that some people get burner phones, like just little throwaway phones, but again, that's another incurred expense. Some people get little SIM cards and switch them in and out with their unlocked phones. And that's another thing, side note, pineapples. Do not try to jailbreak your phone. Because if you try to jailbreak it so you can beat around the bush and go overseas and not have to worry about anything, if something goes wrong with your phone over there and you can't fix it, neither can they. And then if you bring it back home and they still can't fix it because you tried to fix it internationally and they did it, doctored it up some way, the American people can't undoctor up what the foreign people doctored up. So don't try to jailbreak your phone. Don't try to cheat your way around it. Call customer support. Let them handle it and tell you what you need to know so that you know how to plan moving forward. Um, number two. Uh, check for those roaming packages when you call customer support because some carriers have really good deals. You know, you might not always want to buy an extra SIM card or buy a low Wi-Fi, buddy. I know T-Mobile comes with an international package on its own, depending on the plan that you have. That's what the one that I have. Um, so check those roaming packages, call customer support, and they'll let you know. Um, number three, if you choose to use your own phone and do the SIM card thing, make sure that your phone is unlocked. So again, I'm reiterating for the third time, call customer support because they'll be able to unlock your phone for you, especially if you're already out of your phone contract. That's important because sometimes, depending on how long you still have within the terms of your contract, you might not be able to unlock your phone. So that might not be an option for you. So again, customer support will be the ones to let you know whether or not you can unlock your phone so that you can use interchangeable SIM cards for the different um, companies that are around the world, wherever you decide to go. You know, remember my horror story with the SIM cards. It's not a joke, y'all. That was 1,500 pictures. I'm still salty about it because my SIM card is in a trash can in a dump somewhere in France. 
you know, it happens. You take an L and you learn. That's why I'm trying to help y'all. So, oh, and then last but not least, don't forget. Oh, wait, no. I'm sorry. Number four, turn your phone off completely if you want to. Go on airplane mode so nothing goes in and nothing goes out, which leads into number five. Have your little travel Wi-Fi, buddy, and download a free and easy communication app like WhatsApp, Skype, Text Plus, Google Voice, Hangouts, anything or any app that you prefer, you know, to speak personally with people back home that won't cost you an arm and a leg at the end of the day because at the end of the day you know less money is great money in my opinion but if you guys have any questions i hope you all enjoyed today's travel tip tuesday if you guys want to hear something that you want me to explain or to research for you please let me know you know send me a message on facebook send me a dm on instagram or um, put a like in the comments down here on youtube and i'll get back to you and respond all the time i love talking to everybody Anything for me is at Dawn and Dust Travel, lowercase no spaces. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening and tuning in. I'll see y'all next week.